Okay, I've been working like three jobs. Probably why I never see ya. Probably why I never have time for the fake friends I won't be ya. Oh God, I've been running now. Up early when the sun is out. Not setting out my own soul, but those real ones, they coming out. Oh look. What's up, you guys? It's Adana. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this journey. If you have not already done so, go ahead, subscribe, like this video, like some of my other videos, see what is on my channel, and if you really like what you see, join me on this journey. Um, this video is gonna be a true life series. I've done a couple of these True Life series before where I talk about being a minority student, OBGYN, PA, and an emergency medicine physician. So there's something for everyone out there. And this True Life is going to be about being a DNP student. This is Avery. He's a DNP student um, right in the thick of things. And he's going to be talking about his true life as being an NP student. So for those of you who are still on the fence, PA or NP, this is what you want to see. Um, but I do want to know just a little bit more about Avery and if you do want to know a little bit more about him as well please be sure to follow him at all of his social media handles I will leave a link for that and maybe put it on the screen as well mm -hmm. but Avery can you just kind of introduce yourself a little sure, bit tell us sure. about yourself like what do you like to do apart from NP school Got it. so I work full-time in the emergency department at a children's hospital and when I'm not at work I enjoy sleep like we talked about before, <laughs> definitely getting as much sleep as I can and just finding ways to relieve stress, uh, hanging out with friends. I'm pretty active so I play sports, basketball, some hiking when the weather is appropriate and, and then I listen to audio books, do a lot of audio books. Wow, um, okay. I, I've recently become a big fan of audio books so right now I'm working on Michelle Obama's Becoming which is really good. And um, a really, really good one is Born a Crime by Trevor Noah. That's a, that's a good one to check out. So, okay. Yeah. So you said you like mm -hmm. to work out and relieve stress. Mm -hmm. Is, you know, like, you're, are you, is there stress in your life that you oh, need to, okay. Definitely. Okay. Um, between working full time in the emergency department, which you never know what any day is gonna be like, to uh, the, the daily stresses of being a full-time MP student, you know, you already know about it as well with PA. So it's, there's a lot of stress involved from papers and deadlines and APA format. Do you guys write APA Yes, well? we do. Yeah, Jesus Lord, APA, <laughs> man. So, the vein of our existence. Yeah, so, so there's a lot of stress. So taking time, um, I'm very intentional about my, my free time and my me time, you know, just to step away from all of those things and take personal time just to relax and enjoy myself. Okay, yeah. so I mean, he's alluded to it, but um, if you have not already seen that video, go right now to my channel and type it in. It will be Medical Jeopardy, uh, where Avery and I answer uh, some Jeopardy <laughs> questions. <laughs> like, does that like, so we, you will have to watch and see who won and you know, how well we did on these questions. Um, but you can hit that up uh, in my channel search bar at any point in time after you have finished watching this video. All right. All right. Right, so without further ado, I mean, he kind of got into some of it, but I want him to get deeper into just his life as an NP student and then just like as a student in general. Um, so without further ado, here's Avery's True Life. Oh, look who's reaching now. Oh, friends want to feature now. They don't work. So nursing wasn't my first choice, actually. I was started off pre-dent. I chose dentistry because I was interested in becoming um, a physician or just a doctor working in healthcare. And when I Googled top medical specialties or top healthcare careers, dentistry was number one. So I said, all right, let me look into this. And it was number one for multiple reasons. One, because of salary, of course, and two, just because of the lifestyle. It allowed you to be at home and it didn't have crazy hours. You don't have dentists who are working overnight most, in most places. Uh, so that was one reason why that was attractive to me. Nursing. I chose nursing because um, my mother is a nurse. She's been a nurse for over 25 years now. And she was the one that was encouraging me to go into nursing. She said, if you wanted to be a dentist or go into medicine later on, do nursing first, because it's a better like undergraduate major and degree than biology or chemistry or some of the other sciences that most pre-med and pre-dent students major in. So that's what kind of pushed me into nursing first with my mother who's been a nurse for almost 30 years. Show love to the real ones that know now. Some of y'all don't know now. In a couple months, you're gonna find out. Been blowing up. So, my particular MP program did not have um, any requirements for nursing experience. They only required your uh, bachelor's in nursing, so your BSN, and your RN um, license. So, I didn't have any requirements. However, there are MP programs across the United States who have different requirements. For example, 
one year for, um, depending on what your specialty, what focus you're going into. So if you are going into something acute, then you probably want one to two years of any type of ICU or just critical care experience before starting your MP program. For programs in um, anesthesia like CRNA, they want two years minimum, but they always say the most competitive applicants have three to four plus years of ICU experience before even applying. But MP specifically for a family nurse practitioner, um, there are a lot of programs that don't have any uh, requirements in terms of nursing experience. So because I already started nursing school, I never considered a PA school, uh, especially because I understood that MPs and PAs were there, their work was very similar. They worked in a very similar role. So uh, PA school was not something that was attractive to me at the time. Prior to nursing school, I have considered like all other medical specialties or professions. So I did consider PA, I did consider dentistry, I considered even like respiratory and different things. But um, once I got into nursing, MP was like, I had tunnel vision on MP. Uh, coming up, I wanna climb now. Everybody kind of been Nurse practitioner salaries vary like across the United States and it, it depends on location and experience from what I've researched. So I know that most MPs will start at about 85, 90 and can go up to 150, 170, close to almost 200 depending on your specialty and years of experience and location of course. So. Um, I think that a respectable starting salary for a new graduate MP would probably be right under um, 100000 Hey, I'm working on a Wednesday, then up again the next day. So and so is popping, mm. man, I skip like your leg. I wish I, so I wish I was prepared for um, the, the writing and research. Um, that kind of, I mean, I knew that it was something that was going to be like expected of me, but I didn't, just didn't know to what extent. So writing and research, you really have to familiarize yourself with um, APA format if you're not. So if you want to just brush up on some of those things before getting into a DMP program, because writing and research is what separates the DMP from the MS in, in terms of nurse practitioners. So that's one thing that I wish that somebody just kind of had more conversations with me about. Uh, just to prepare me for the writing and research aspect of the DMP. Like I'm Pele, I never care what they say. Put myself on Spotify. Ooh. Uh, most challenging parts, I would say, is just balance. So something that I would advise students and anyone who is considering a nurse practitioner or any graduate degree, actually, is really do your research in what you're going to school for and make sure that it's something that you're very interested in. Because there's gonna be days when you're gonna be overwhelmed with life and school, and you're gonna to have to be interested enough to just say, this is something that I really want, and that's what's gonna keep you motivated. So I think one of my challenges now is just finding motivation to do some of these tedious assignments, like discussion posts, where you read an article, or the re like a few chapters out of the required text, you give a response, and then on top of that, you respond to two of your classmates, with using a reference, and it's just because, and this is just like these small, tedious assignments. If you're not interested and you're not motivated, you will really find yourself in a place of like, you know, I don't think I want to do this anymore. So um, one of my challenges with this MP school is finding motivation in some of the classes that are not sciences, some of the things that I'm less interested in, like healthcare, finance. These are important classes. But, you know, they're just not things that, you know, grab your interest right away. So that's one of my challenges is just like constantly remaining focused on the goal of getting the doctorate and becoming this nurse practitioner. That's right, I'm coming back like OJ, like a running back in his old days, still rocking. All right, so I think one thing when it comes to free time, I belittled my MP program. And I think a lot of us as nurses, we, because of the options to become an MP where there are hybrid courses where you can do some mostly online and then you just do clinical. Uh, I think it creates the facade that you can work full time and be involved in a lot of extra things and still go to school at the same time and obtain that degree. And I have, I have experienced that that is, that is very false. That's all I can say. It's, just, it's very false. I, I've struggled to find balance to go to work three days a week and work the 36 hour minimum and also take two to three classes of a graduate level course. It's, it's very difficult. Um, so 
like I said earlier, by my, my free time, I, I really try to be intentional about the few, the little time that I do have to, to really make it purposeful, where whether I'm sleeping and not being interrupted, or I'm really spending time with people and getting like that social uh, requirement that I need to be to maintain my mental health, or if I'm working out just to try to keep my body in shape. But um, you have even less time when you when you decide to do both uh, full time work and work as um, and, and a full time student. So you really need to be intentional about the way that you spend the, your free time. The new opportunities. Um, as a nurse now, there nursing is what makes it so attractive and just special is that there's a specialty for everyone. You know, if you like kids, then you do pediatrics. If you're interested in a faster pace, you work in the ER. Um, if you like one to two patients, then critical care ICU is for you. Uh, if you like working with the adult population, there's geriatrics. As an advanced practice RN and um, as I get ready to get closer to finishing and becoming the MP that I want to be. I'm excited for the increased opportunities and the increased responsibility that I have. And I know as working as an MP, I will have a little bit more of authority in, in healthcare in terms of furnishing medications and being, instead of being the one who is carrying out the plans, I'm the one that's now creating the plan of care. So I'm, I'm excited to, to just have an increased role where I will be in positions to make a little bit more decisions in terms of uh, the people and patients that I impact. So by nature, nursing profession has been for years um, dominated by women. And in undergrad, I was one of three males um, in a class. So I had a small class of about 16 of us. So there was three of us male. And in my current program right now, I, I don't know how many of us are total in MP because we're all taking different courses, but in my last class that I was in, I was one of five, and there was about 40 students in the room. So nursing, when I go to work, I'm always like definitely the minority, one of one of four. I can always count the male nurses on my hand. So um, I know that a lot of male nurses are going towards um, CRNA school rather than MP school, and if they do go the MP route, a lot of them are going into maybe acute care uh, nurse practitioner, from my experience. My uh, particular program is it's like almost hybrid. So most classes, didactic is um, online. So research and writing, most of it is done online. We have things called seminar weeks where we come in for about two to three days, depending on the course, for some lecture, and then most of the coursework is completed online through Canvas. Once we get into some of the, the sciences, um, health assessment, advanced pathophysiology, pharmacology, different things like that, we will then have more lab settings and uh, more clinical requirements where we would have to come in and do a few hours um, clinically. My program is also set up where most of it is, the front half of it is more lecture and research and writing. And the second half is more gets you into clinicals and lab skills and different things like that. So, and my, my uh, program is out of state. So my seminar weeks, I have to travel to California and spend three to five days there and then come back home to the East Coast. And there's a lot of programs that work like that where they are hybrid, where most of it is online, but then they require you to go to campus for a few days throughout the semester, every semester, um, just to fulfill requirements. So there are many MP specialties. Uh, the most popular one, from my experience, is the family nurse practitioner. It's popular because it provides you with a wide scope. It prepares you to see the newborns all the way to 100 plus. Um, so many MPs or many nurses are attracted to that program because you may not know exactly what you want to do, what area you, you want to work in, and this will give you some flexibility to be uncertain. So you may want to go into the ER and then change your mind and say, maybe I want to work in the clinic. You can do that, or maybe you can just do primary care and um, you know see patients, do checkups and physicals and different things like that. So family MP is one of the most popular ones. We also have acute care MP, where you work in um, mostly ICUs, you can work some ER as well. You also have um, Women's Health MP, which is something that's really attractive as well. There's uh, the midwife as well. These are all certifications that you can get as a nurse practitioner. And uh, psychiatric mental health, that's a really big one. 
One that I believe um, has, in terms of nurse, practi nurse practitioners, they earn the most, in, especially in California. So psychiatric mental health nurse practitioners, I've seen salaries starting at $150,000, $160,000. So that's one that is very attractive as well. Apart from nurse practitioner specialties, another advanced practice RN's um, degree and specialty is anesthesia. So nurse anesthetists, CRNAs, of course, they are the, the biggest, highest paid um, advanced practice RNs. Nursing is a great profession uh, because it, it, there's something, there's a specialty for everyone. If you like pediatrics, then you can work in a children's hospital. Geriatric, there are nursing homes, there's geriatric um, specialty care. Uh, if you like a faster pace, the ER is for you. If you like to work with patients, um, one-to-one -one ratios or one-to-two ratios, then you want to go into critical care, ICU. Um, if you don't like the clinical aspect so much, then you could be a, a, a case manager. If you want to do something in administration, there's opportunities there as well. If you want to, um, there, there's CNOs, chief nursing officers. So nursing is, is, there's a variety, there's a plethora of different nursing opportunities. You can also work in occupational health if you want like a nine to five. So there's many different ways. So I think that's one of the, the main things that makes nursing so special and so unique is that you can be a nurse and work in so many different um, clinical settings and non-clinical settings as well. For nurse practitioners, one thing that nurse practitioners are facing, a struggle that we're, that we're facing right now, or a challenge for nurse practitioners now is that nurse, and nurse practitioner students is the lack of standard in terms of how we're being prepared in school. So there are many nurse practitioner programs that are offered online where you can, they're advertisers, get your MP within 18 months or 36 months or 24 months. And these things look attractive to us sometimes because it's like, oh, you know, that's, that's such a short time. I'll be an MP, I'll have an increased role, I'll make a little bit more money. Um, but one thing that I would just leave with you guys is just a little bit of advice is take responsibility for your learning. So although these programs may be attractive, you want to research these schools and make sure that they're preparing you to be a proficient provider. Uh, because you, patient safety comes down is, is the most important thing. You want to be a safe practitioner and you want to be prepared to be a safe practitioner. So research your schools and take responsibility for your learning. Find out how clinicals, how your clinical um, placement is organized and um, ask questions, figure out if, and figure out what you want to do. So if you want to be an FMP and you want to work in the ER, then talk to your school, talk to your advisors about getting you hours into the emergency department and also hours in other places so that you can be well-rounded when you go into, uh, when you begin practicing as a practitioner. So that's what I would leave with you guys is just most importantly, take responsibility for your learning and nursing is fun. It's, there's a specialty for you and I'm excited to begin. Thank you so much for doing that. I really appreciate you coming out talking to the subscribers. I know they really want to hear, like there's a, some of them that are really on the fence between PA and NP. And so this is giving you some more information on exactly what um, the different routes you can go to as an NP, which is something that I was familiar with, but I didn't know exactly like all of the various specialties and the intricate details that Avery so <laughs> just beautifully <laughs> pointed out. So thank you for that. Again, um, if you have not done so, go ahead, hit Avery up on all of his different social media. Um, we're gonna leave that on, probably on the screen or in the description box below, um, so you can go and find those there. And also go ahead and hit me up on my social media as well, at Adana the PA on Instagram. Subscribe, like this video. Again, really, really appreciate you. Thank Good you, luck, you. blessings you. in your program. You. And um, Avery said that he's willing to come back and talk to us oh, about yeah. uh, how his his life has changed post NP school. So, Absolutely. you know, if we're still doing this, <laughs> hopefully yeah. um, you, we, can, we can look into that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye guys. Bye. And sorry, so one thing, going back to what you were talking about with what I'm excited in, what I'm interested in, I can throw this in there. Um, one specialty, it's not uh, MP certification, but as NPs, you can be uh, an RN first assist is what they call it. And you can assist the surgeons directly. So I know many of us are interested in anesthesia and CRNAs and they make so much money and they work in the OR, but the first assist, the RN first assist actually assists the surgeon and they're right there. So that's something that some of you might be interested in. 
finish off your MP special your MP certification and then look into an RN first assist program. You can also be an RN first assist without um, going to MP school. That's something for some of those who don't want to go the MP route.